Hi, this is Paul from finishyoursong.com and in what may seem to be something of a self-serving move I'm going to have a look in this video at exporting your project from your DAW so that you can parcel it up and send it off to somebody else to mix. Somebody who may be using a completely different DAW to you. In my book, which you can now download from the website at www.finishyoursong.com um, in my total beginner's guide to home recording having walked you through the process in brief and in outline of how to mix your song I do say that if all else fails you can get someone in and that someone could be me so as I say this might be slightly self-serving but on the other hand, you may just want to share your mix with other people that you're working with, you're collaborating with, and this is how to do it that's a complete cross-door method of sharing your project as it stands at present. So, what do you do? Well, I'm going to have a look at how you do the actual export in a minute, but there's a few things to consider. First of all, you want to make sure that you export everything that you want to export. This may seem obvious, but it's not necessarily as easy as you think. I've got the project that I'm going to be working with here open in Cubase, and I've set the left and right markers at the beginning and the end of the song. As you can see, the right marker is lined up where some of the audio tracks, most of the audio tracks in fact, finish. However, that might not necessarily be where the song finishes. To give you an example, you've got some MIDI drums here, and if one of them finishes with an almighty crash on the cymbal, although the MIDI note that generates that cymbal crash is there, that cymbal crash could echo on for some time. Likewise, if you've recorded electric guitar and it's got a delay on it, then the delay dying out may last some considerable time. Obviously, if you've recorded it, it won't last beyond the end of your recording, so you're quite safe with audio recording to finish your export at the point where your audio finishes. As you can see, my MIDI tracks finish somewhat short of the end of the song, but it's, it's something to consider. The other thing to consider is what you've done to the tracks you've recorded after you've recorded them. This is an example. You might have put on a few effects. You might have put on some sends. You might have used some EQ. You certainly will have altered the position of the faders to give you a nice board mix that you could listen to whilst you were overdubbing your guitars, your vocals, whatever it is that you've overdubbed after you've done the basic track. So all of that needs to be undone and reset. Now in Cubase we do have global buttons here, so I can bypass the EQs, the channel strip and any sends just by clicking on that. I can also bypass the inserts, but there's an issue with inserts. There's actually two issues with inserts. One is if I click that, my microphone will be disconnected. So I'm not going to do it. Uh, but the other issue is here. This is the bass guitar. And it's going through an amp simulator. So if I disable the inserts globally, on, the tra on all the tracks, I will lose my amp. So there might be effects in your inserts that you want to print onto the tracks you're exporting. So you have to be careful to go through and only disable what you don't want. So you can disable it on a track by track basis just by clicking like that and they all go down. Or you can disable on an insert by insert basis just by hovering and using the bypass insert function and so on. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. So we've got now to the stage where we've reset all of the faders to zero. I'm not going to do that because it'll take too long. We've bypassed 
all our inserts that we want to bypass. We've left in the effects we want. We've bypassed the EQs, the channel strip, the sends. Anything we don't want to print is bypassed. So the next thing to do is to set up a target. And what I've done here, this is the project folder for Flames in the Fire. And I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it Export. And that's going to be where I'm going to export all of my audio that I'm about to generate. So coming back into here and going up to the file menu, I go file, export, audio mix down. And this is the normal export window for Cubase. But we're going to use it in a different way. So I'm going to click channel batch export and that then gives me the option to export a whole bunch of different uh, tracks. If I don't have that enabled, I can only pick one at a time to export. That's no good. Normally you just have the stereo output channel selected as your one export channel and that's what you use when you mix down. However, we want to export multiple tracks all at once. So we'll go to channel batch export and I've previously, when I've been testing this, selected what I want. I don't want the stereo out. I don't want to mix. I don't need it. Um, and if I've reset all my faders to zero, then it's pretty pointless as a mix anyway. We've got the group channels. I don't need them. Whoever's mixing will create their own group channels. And it's the same with effects. I don't need my effects. I've bypassed the sends anyway. So there's no need to select. What I do need is my instruments. And if you click the little tick box by the instrument track, you'll see that it will select all of the ones in that folder or in that type of track. So I'm exporting my bass guitar, my extra drums and my rock organ, which are virtual instruments. These are VSTs that are MIDI tracks is the bass guitar and you can see it's a MIDI track. That's MIDI information, not audio information. It's going to render out the audio, which is why it's important to leave the insert in place because I want to render out the bass guitar with the amp sound on it, not just the bass guitar as generated by the VSTi. I've also got VST instruments that are in my instrument rack. Now, if you're using Cubase 7.5 Cubase 8, I don't know that there'll be any differentiation between these because, of course, in Cubase 7.5, they ceased to have this artificial difference between instrument channels and instrument tracks. But nonetheless, here you can see that every single output, the two VST instruments are the Nashville kit and the Twisted kit, both instances of Easy Drummer. And what I've done for this song as I've put in a previous video, is I've used some drums from the Nashville kit and some drums from the Twisted kit to provide a composite kit. I renamed each of the outputs in Cubase to be what it was, rather than just leaving it as output one, output two, output three. And that's been very helpful here because now it's gonna export them, the names that I put in, otherwise you get output one, output two, output three and of course all my audio channels. What I haven't selected, I actually deselected it, was the mic channel. And that's because that's my microphone that I'm talking on right now. So I've got the song name and the audio is going to go to that project export folder. So we're going to export to our export folder rather than putting all these extra files in the audio folder for the project we're going to put them all in a separate folder makes it easier to zip them up at the end of the day the naming scheme you can alter I'm going to accept the default Cubase naming scheme which is track channel number channel type and then what what I called it in the first place I'm going to export it as a WAV file. 
Now, there are other options here, but there's two things. First of all, if you export it as, say, a Windows Media audio file, that's going to be about as much use as a chocolate watch if the guy on the other end of your export is using a Mac. You don't want to export in a lossy format, such as MPEG, because you want to maintain your high quality. You only really want to have a lossy format, like an MP3, right at the end of your mix. WAV files are interchangeable across Macs and PCs. They are uncompressed, they are high quality, and for this purpose I would recommend that you only ever use a WAV file. Here you want to set the audio engine output to be the same as your project settings. Again, you don't want any variation from what you've already recorded. You want to get the best quality you can to give the person mixing your track the best chance of giving you an outstanding result. And once you've done all that, you just hit export. Okay, so we've now exported our project. What I'm going to do is we're going to have a look in the export folder to start with. And there we have all of our sounds labeled as instrument, synth, whatever reason, and audio. They're all waves and they're all exactly the same length, which is hardly surprising because what Cubase does when it renders out is it renders everything between the two markers as a WAV file, including silence. And because WAV files are not a lossy format, what you end up with is a file that's just as big, whether it's completely silent or whether it's full of musical information. But we're not going to worry about that. What we're going to have a look at is how they sound. So I'm going to import two of those files. What I'm going to import is I'm going to import the bass guitar because as you can see there the bass guitar is MIDI information and I'm also going to import the extra drums because that's just bits along the uh, song. It's not a continuous part. So what we'll do is file, import, audio file. And we'll find the bass and the extra drums. Open them. We're not going to copy the file to the working directory because they're already in the project directory. And there we go at the bottom. Oh, it's not imported the other one. File, import, audio file. Instrument extra drums open. Don't yeah. Right, okay, so there we go. Right. Let's just give myself some screen space here. And as you can see, we have a continuous audio file. This is the bass guitar. Just pop that where it's about to go into the drums. And this is the drums. So we'll have a quick listen to each one and you can hear it. So here comes the bass. Now as you can hear, it's been recorded with the distortion from the amp plugin, which is what we wanted. And that was MIDI, which has been rendered as audio. And likewise, if we come to the drums, Here's what we got from our instrument track. Well, isn't that a thrilling drum part? But the point is that our MIDI, whether it's on an instrument track or an instrument channel, has been rendered as audio. Our audio, of course, has been rendered as audio. And if I import the comp vocal, just to show you again that where we've got 
an audio part that's comprised of multiple smaller parts what we get here is an audio part that's got all of those gaps taken out it's been rendered as a single audio file so that's how to export your project from Cubase the only thing to bear in mind here is that we now have 28 audio files with a combined size of 1.41 gigabytes that's a fair amount of audio and you're going to have to compress that and upload it to Dropbox or your other favorite uh, file sharing site so it's up to you whether you do it as one colossal zip file or whether you compress it into a series of zip files 28 items four with seven in each would give you a reasonable um, breakdown just a thought okay so that's how to export your project from Cubase I'm sure that it's broadly similar for any other DAW don't forget to go to the website, sign up to my email list, and download my book. Uh, you might find something there of interest, even if you're not a total beginner to home recording. And until next time, you take care of yourselves.